Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 58. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. I wanted to first mention that I will be at the Bitcoin conference later this month in Las Vegas, so I do look forward to seeing a lot of you guys there. It usually is a lot of fun, get to see a lot of different speakers, and it usually is a fun time. So hopefully to see you guys there. Second of all, as of May 1st, 2025, the total market cap of the entire cryptocurrency asset class is approximately $3.017 trillion, whereas the fair value logarithmic regression trend line is at around $3.725 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 19%. Now, as we've said before, the asset class goes through periods of undervaluation and overvaluation. And one of the things to remember, and we're going to work it in pretty early, one of the things to remember is that when when the asset class is below sort of the quote-unquote fair value logarithmic regression trend line, which as we know is a monotonically increasing function due to just the increase, you know, the increase in, in retail interest and, and whatnot, um, whenever the asset class is below that level, Bitcoin dominance tends to go up. And one of the things to consider is that a lot of the prior Bitcoin bull markets, you know, Bitcoin dominance goes up until the asset class durably breaks above the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. And once it breaks above it and can sustain it, that's usually when altcoins join the party. However, we have not seen that this cycle. We've seen the asset class go above the fair value a couple of times, but it hasn't actually made a more durable move. So at this point, it's still below the fair value by about 19%. Now, one of the things to remember is if you take the percent difference between the total market cap and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, you get a chart that looks like this. So the red line represents, you know, when it's at that, that fair value. And you can see there's been plenty of times where the asset class will go above the fair value and then come back down and then go above it and then come back down. And it, it really does look like this time has been no different, right? I mean... Sometimes you go up above it, and then you come back down, you go above it again, you come back down. In 2021, we didn't really durably go above it until Bitcoin dominance started to crash. In 2017, we didn't durably go above it until Bitcoin dominance really started to crash. And so it's one of those things where it's brutal for those that relied more on the altcoin market, unless they were in the few altcoins that did well. It's been brutal for those people, but for the people that have been mostly in Bitcoin, it hasn't been so bad because while the asset class can feel kind of sluggish and a lot of the altcoins are really low, Bitcoin has been absorbing a lot of that liquidity from the rest of the asset class and is why we do spend so much time talking about, you know, the relative valuations of altcoins against Bitcoin and how you preserve the Satoshi valuation of your portfolio, right? That's the whole idea. Um, but as of right now, again... The asset class is still slightly below the fair value. Uh, we've we've actually seen this before. I mean, even in 2017, the asset class didn't go durably overvalued until May of the post-election year. And then the cycle before that, it was not until February of the post-election year. As always, there is no guarantee that we go durably above it. My, my speculation on the matter is that in order to really durably go above it, you need to see quantitative tightening end. Uh, you need to see us on the other side of, you know, whatever potential growth slowdown scare, or if in fact we do get a recession, last cycle we had a recession, and we actually got pretty close to the lower regression band. It might not look like it on here, but the lower band is about 97 billion right there. And we know that on that day, total market cap had a, had a wick down to about 100 billion. The daily close was much higher, closer to 142 billion, but there was a wick down near 100 billion. So just know that that is always a possibility. And uh, it just goes to show you how the asset class has been continuing to do what it normally does. The main difference this cycle that I think a lot of people were not prepared for is just how long Bitcoin has been sucking liquidity from the rest of the asset class. And that should likely continue until monetary policy sufficiently changes, right? And right now, Bitcoin is, is doing relatively okay. It's back about 96K. It already went up to 97. Uh, I know if, you know, this has been, this is actually a pretty important level. I'll probably do another video on it soon. But this is a really important level for Bitcoin because this is where Bitcoin broke down from on February 24th, right? This was the main area 
where Bitcoin broke down. This is where we said you're likely going to see weakness between February options expiration and March options expiration. And then we said it'll likely extend into early to mid-April. You can see that, right? February options expiration was right here. March options expiration um, you know, was somewhere over here. And then we said it'll likely extend into early to mid-April, especially given where, where the stock market is. And we got another lower low. Then we said we're likely going to get a death cross rally right we'll likely get a death cross rally just like we got there just like we got here in in 2023 so 2024 2023 you also got one in 2021 you got one in 2019 right and so the, the thing that is is important for bitcoin right now and we'll do a sort of a dedicated video on this is if we want to avoid what happened in 2019 then we need to really durably reclaim the level that we broke down from because in 2019 you can see that bitcoin had you know it it, had, it also broke down into and then had the death cross rallied into it and then swept that high and then ultimately came back down it'd be nice to avoid that but in order to avoid that I, I think we need to get a weekly close above the weekly open when bitcoin broke down so that would imply getting a weekly close back above 96 and a half k right a weekly close above that I think would go on a go a long way and in, in beginning to restore confidence to the market. Until then, you, you know, you always have to be prepared that it, it might not be, um, you know, it, it might not be different at this point. Hopefully, it is, but like, there's no guarantees. And so, let's see what Bitcoin does here. If it's just a sweep of this high, or if it's not. If it is just a sweep of the high, and then Bitcoin goes back down, then what's likely to happen is that you'll see this thing just stay again below the fair value but above the lower green line and you'll likely see just liquidity go back to bitcoin if bitcoin can reclaim that level and and then quantitative tightening in say like this summer then you might finally see altcoins uh join the party but that's the way i see it right now with respect to bitcoin and and that's why i think this is a, a pretty important level that we'll talk more about here relatively soon but That'll wrap it up for this video. Again, I do think the ultimate target for me for the crypto asset class is approximately 10 trillion, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends?